My Gavan and Melonin, and well met indeed. I'm Arachia Galadirth and head of the modding team behind Divide and Conquer. Welcome back to the High Elves as we finish off their campaign. Now, I remember and I recall saying that I was going to defeat the army that took Mithlond from us, and then I was going to take Mithlond itself. And I was hoping to do that in a couple of episodes, and I thought, well, well, why? We've already won the campaign. There is absolutely no point in people... None of you want to now just wait and watch as I build up an army. So I would have done it off-screen, and if I'm going to do it off-screen, I might as well just cheat the army into existence, because it's basically the same thing as far as your viewership is concerned. So that is what I have done. So here we are at Mythond with an army hand-picked. Um, unfortunately, we now vastly outclass them, and I should have done this army entirely made up of Sindar, because I think it would have been more interesting. But there are some Sindar in the army that will take Mythlond. Also, I'm not very good with playing campaigns once they are actually won. And as you will all recall, this campaign is now won. Isengard was destroyed by Rohan. We didn't have to get involved at all. The city of Isengard, or the Tower of Orthanc rather, is actually controlled by Rohan. So we can't even get involved there. Dunland has fallen. And um, Mythlond has been attacked, of course, by the Arad and Naim who we are now fighting. This isn't actually at Mithlond, because they only left one unit in garrison there, so taking Mithlond, I, I won't bother showing that. Um, but fighting the main army outside here is what we are bringing. And then I shall also then fight at um, Umbar itself, with an army led by Elrond. Today's army is led by Dawn and Austin the Smith, and one of the twins, I can't remember which. And uh, we are up against, as I say, the Ardenaeum. So I am going to fight the last two battles of this campaign in this episode, which means you will find in the description below a link to the straw poll I have created for who shall we play as next. Um, if a faction is not listed in the straw poll, it is because I simply do not want to play as them. And so um, asking for them to be listed will simply get you nowhere. Just vote for who you want and uh, move along. Um, and then I would hope, therefore, that this week you will get the first two episodes of whoever is next. So I'll do an extra episode because I am off work this entire week. I'm recording this on Monday and you're watching this on Monday. And uh, I don't go back to work until next Monday. So I shall use that opportunity to record the new campaign's first couple of episodes. Along with another couple of Warhammer episodes. Something I am going to do with the Warhammer episodes. Bugger, their catapults are already firing off. Just as their lines meet ours. These are of course the old Ardenaeum. The entire roster of the Ardenaeum has long since been shaken up and looks absolutely nothing like this. There's some Ardenaeum armsmen there moving in on our Elduin way. Arrokwen. Put your lance down, you stupid fool. Pull yourselves out of that. Pull yourselves out of that carnage. Those archers will flee. Um, the Warhammer episode, of course, I'm going to play first four episodes of Réponse de Lyonnais, and I'm going to play the first four episodes of The Dwarves, and then we will vote on who shall win. However, in true Galu form, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to carry on playing as Réponse. Um, she is far more enjoyable, or rather, Bretonia is far more enjoyable as a faction than The Dwarves. And uh, already I find myself ten times more interested in what's going to happen with her campaign than with The Dwarf campaign. And I don't want to play two Warhammer episodes on the go at the same time, because uh, it is uh, less popular. Uh, and I'd rather focus my efforts on one campaign that we can bring to conclusion. So I'm uh, going to just drop the Dwarves and play as the Réponse. If in time Warhammer proves to gain traction and more people do start to want to see more campaigns in that regard. Because I am hoping to get better at Warhammer, that's kind of the point of it. Uh, let's turn everyone off of defensive mode. Then... Um, in that instance, I may well revisit the Dwarves, but I was disappointed. Apologies to talk about Warhammer in the DAC video. Um, there hasn't been any modding for DAC for some time, so uh, I don't have anything to update you. Um, but uh, I was disappointed with Warhammer, the Dwarves particularly, that their roster is so incredibly small. Um, and and that's one of the another one of the sort of gripes that I personally have with Warhammer. The enemy are badly bloodied. They have lost half their men. Is that a lot of the rosters are very small, and uh, only with DLCs and things like that have they increased them. But at the beginning, when the game begins, many, or when it came out, when the game came out, many nations had hardly any people at all. Ready your sword. 
These are the more aggressive version over here, the Noldor, and Noldor veterans. Oh, I should say that every unit you're seeing, as you can see, has now been upgraded with Celebrimborian plate, and you will note that they do not change visuals. So the Noldor have the silver armor no matter how highly they're rated their armor are, and the Elder Inway have the um, golden or bronze armor no matter how high their armor is. And the point of that is rather to keep them visually distinct. I appreciate lots of people do um, really like uniformity. I mean, I am amongst them. But when you've got three units that already have the uh, the silver armor, it doesn't really matter. Oh, no, actually, no, having said that, because there isn't a Noldor version of the cavalry, so this would be the only Noldor unit in silver armor if it had silver armor. And there isn't a Noldor pike unit, so it'd be obvious that it's the pike one. But a lot of people like the bronze armor. This is the main reason. Lots of people like the bronze armor. Lots of people like the silver armor. And there are people that ask for the Noldor to have silver armor when they upgrade. And there are people that ask for the Elder Inway to have bronze armor when they upgrade. Yeah, other way around. The Noldor to have bronze and the Elder Inway to have silver. Yeah, so by keeping them just as they are, we can appease both parties. But no, they do not get a visual change. Neither, I believe, do the Cinder. They did in the past, but that was when there was only one type of unit, if memory serves. So all the Noldor units had bronze or silver, and there were only Noldor units. At that point, I'm fairly certain they did change to then go to bronze or silver, whichever one they didn't have. But now that there are two sets of units using the two sets of armors, it doesn't make as much sense. Ah, the Yeregian smiths have ploughed into the side of these Abrazanim Narduba with. And then the Rokuen come in just to finish the job tidy. Now, I will cut out the middle bit all together. Um, so you won't go back, we won't go back to the campaign map. Um, the campaign will conclude with these two battles. Now, this one has been considerably quicker than, uh, than expected. But the other one, we've got a siege of city with a full garrison, so it will not be as easy. And I've given myself worse troops in the other one as well, as you'll see in a moment. But it just made no sense just turning off the recording and then waiting off screen for um, our army to form. That was, I just thought that, that was just you pointless. You might as well just build the army off screen. And, because you, obviously, until I told you, you would never would have known the difference. That's why I think it doesn't matter. And also, of course, because we won the campaign. And these are the armies that I would have made if we had infinite time, which we had. The only threat was Angmar, but now that Dunnan has been defeated, Moria has been defeated, Isengard has been defeated, uh, Bree Our and the Northern Dunedain have full reign to take now down behold, uh, Angmar. Cowardly foe run. This is a clear victory. Jeebus McNeebus, we are unbelievably powerful when we have high rated armor and ranking. We had sword increase as well, courtesy of the, uh, courtesy of, where did the elves get their sword increase? Uh, it's from the guild, isn't it? The Bladesmith Guild, wherever that was built. So, 180 kills, the Elder Inway Rockwen were the top spot, but second to them were the Tierno. Uh, sorry, no, were the Eregian Smiths at 115. Dorn and Austin himself took quite a few down. Then, in joint third, the Tierno and the Mithlon Nobles on 101. Archer's not doing as well this time, but everyone's sort of doing all right. Um, we lost hardly any units at all. <laughs> and there we are. The Mithlond army has fallen. Herimor, conqueror of Mithlond, is no more, and Mithlond returns to our side. And now, vengeance shall be struck upon the Ardenaim as Elrond himself heads into the deserts of Farhad to the Bay of Umbar to exact tenfold on these dark Numenorians what they did to us. Welcome then to the port city of Umbar. Now there is a unique Umbar knocking around in um, in Googie's mod. Oh, DCI Last Alliance. They have a unique Umbar, but um, DCI Last Alliance has quite rightly taken the view that none of their assets nor their um, anything basically that they've added to the game, nothing can be used by other mods until DCI has released. And even then there'll probably be an embargo period of, I don't know, a month or something like that, which is absolutely fair enough because you want people to know that you created it. Whereas if they gave it to us now, most, most people would associate Umbar with Dak and then when it came out it wouldn't be new. I'm sure that Reforged probably has their own version of Umbar as well, but um, this is a perfect opportunity to tell you that many of Reforged battle maps are specifically designed for humans versus humans i.e. you can make the map as crazy as you want if humans are playing because they know how to use it. 
The AI does not. The AI is really, really poor with custom settlements. Really poor with custom settlements. And so we can't just lift reforged cities and bung them into the campaign because the AI just will not do anything. If they are defending, they will stand in the middle and do nothing, even if they sally out. And if they are attacking, they just simply won't move to the square. They will just stand there and do nothing because they can't compute how to use the map. Uh, a key feature of this with Reforged, and something I would love to get into DAC, um, and I see Reforged use, is they open up the spaces in between the buildings, which I think is awesome. Um, where's a building with a courtyard, for example? This one just here. Let's presume that these arches had nothing in them. In Reforged, they'd let you in this building. Um, I've seen a couple of maps where the square, for example, is tucked away in like an area like this. Um, and so you've got to get through these narrow passages to get to the centre and, and things like that. And uh, I just think that's cool. But the AI just simply can't use that, so it would not work. But this is Umbar. This is a, the highest level of an Ardenaeum city. So you'll see it's very Gondor-inspired, but doesn't immediately jump off the page as being Gondorian. The castle in the corner is particularly cool, I do think. Um, I really like that. I think that looks awesome. Um, but it's got the same sort of roofing, but just not bright blue tiles, the same marbling. Um, and again, it's very inspired by Numenorian. What is Numenorian in DAC? But it's clearly not Gondorian or Amruthian. This is the army we have brought. We needed some siege, of course, so four elven catapults join us, although in the files they're called elves catapult, which was actually really annoying, and I had, it's the only unit I had to look at. Um, I've been systematically going through the files and renaming every unit to its in-game name, so that cheaters like myself... Although I don't really ever cheat, I only do it for purposes like this. But um, if you ever need to spawn units in, it's now actually obvious what the unit is. I don't know why we changed it all those years ago. I don't know why I thought it would be a good idea. But now they have this name. So for example, Sindar Archers, when you're trying to cheat them into the game, they're now called Sindar Archers. Whereas before they were called Elven Medium Archers. Which just no one would ever think that as a name. So um, now they're actually called what they are. But as you can see, we've got five of them. Watch for the enemy. Five Sindar Archers come from the depths of Mithlond to return vengeance to the Ardenaeum. Behind them we've gone for melee specialists. Noldor veterans with the highest possible um, armor and sword stat. You can only increase the sword stat by one. Um, unfortunately it's hard coded. There is not a two or a three even though the icons for two and three are in the files but you can't give a unit more than two, uh, more than one melee boost. And then we've got some Mithlon nobles, of course again coming because Mithlon was sacked by these bastards and they've come to do the same. Eregi and Smiths are with us because they're such a damn fine unit, you've got to take them everywhere you go. And of course behind, rather depleted from their last battles, are the other twin and Elrond himself. With Gilgalad's company. And that is what we bring to the fight. Now I appreciate I did not show you the statistic... Uh, not the statistics, sorry, the setup of our enemy. The enemy are bringing in reinforcements. But rest assured, our enemy is quite, quite strong here today. Now, they've got reinforcements coming in, but we'll just let those get into the center. But if we take a look at their troops, we've got some Naru and Aru, um, what are they called? Royal Guard, I believe. The non bodyguard version. Behind them, there's, tra there's a couple of trash, there's a few bits more of trash. And then we've got some Abrazan in the two-handed sword version. Corsair Warriors there, slightly better than nothing. Um, again, some of the... Uh, they were renamed, weren't they? But what are they called at the minute? They were changed to Rosadun Footman, I think. But I can't remember what they're called now. Uh, anyway, more Corsair Warriors. So we're putting up a little bit more of a fight. The There's some of their down. marine units over here. And, of course, you may already have seen the mounted Naru and Aru uh, Knights, I think they're called. They're simply their name. More Abrazanum over on the side, particularly the uh, defensive version. Some Ardenheim armsmen standing at the back there. But there is also somewhere our Farazon's Faithful. I'm sure I saw our Farazon's Faithful on the unit cards. No, I think it was them that I saw. Uh, and they're not the Faithful. Faithful have pikes. So, there are a couple of units in there that are all right. Um... Ah, you took down the... Brilliant. Are you the one on the gate? We've breached yeah. our enemy's walls. I want these towers down. I know they're not actually bothering to come and stop us. But, uh, if you would. Oh, I should have turned the timer off. That's disappointing. If they had come and stood by the walls, these towers would actually do something. But as they have decided not to... Although they are moving their reinforcements in, I've just noticed... Very well. 
shall meet them. With Elven Blade. The reinforcements are completely trashed. They'll be absolutely wiped out by what we have just sent over there. Bring down that wall and that wall too. So we've got more ways in. Don't kill anybody. Archers, you may fire when ready. We've breached our enemy's walls. They're coming for the catapults. It's a bit too late, friends. The, the city has totally fallen. Ah, the horns of the High Elves blare across the plains of Umbar. A sound not heard here in its entire history is now will now be come to mean something totally new. Fear. Oh, you can shoot the gatehouse. What happens if you shoot the gatehouse? If we continue like this, we will smash I don't know what happens enemy. if we shoot the gatehouse. We'll find out in a second. Only half the enemy force remains. Here we go. Does the actual gatehouse just fall down? Uh, no, it just takes some knocks and becomes damaged. <laughs> What's the point of that? <laughs> oh, is that because that would stop like boiling oil and things like that? And they've got some Rosadan crossbowmen, but under the full fury of all of our Sindar archers, Elrond and one of his sons, they have swiftly been uh, taken care of. Right, it's time, it's time, it's time. The army marches. We will come upon the centre of the city from every direction we our can muster. Our slain the enemy general. Without him, his troops will lose their will to fight. Our archers are not actually going to be that useful once we get into the city, so... The enemy army flees the field. Pursue and run them down. Right, the, so the square. There's two ways in there, which doesn't help us at all. There's a way in at the back there. We want to use that. We want to basically come in from every direction. It's the only way we're going to be able to do it. If we bottleneck ourselves, it'll be all over. So, Nolder in veterans. Come down the middle. Let's slow it down while we do this. Hold the shift key to slow it down like that, by the way. Uh, the unit that we send around there isn't actually going to go around there, is it? So we're going to have to send them that way. And then we'll also send two to go. So that's two to go from there and two to go from there. And then we want those to go from there. And if we can, we will send the smiths all the way around. And if you take Elrond and his son with him. Now the archers. Um, yeah, get yourselves over there. Now we shall speed up and watch everyone move in. We don't have any pike units. Um, but we have got, as I say, melee, experienced melee forces. We've captured the enemy's walls. So that's the hope, best we can hope for. Hopefully they will actually go where they are meant to. Yep, they've turned left, that's good. Sometimes the, the fastest way over there is actually to go through the middle, isn't it? And they often do disobey your orders and do silly things like that. But the enemy has not bothered to hold at the walls, which I do find quite interesting, so... Ah, oh, look at that. Look at that. The columns. The columns marching into the break in the city. It's glorious. The High Elves easily have the accolade in DAC at the moment of having the highest quality unit models. There is not a single unit amongst their roster that drops form with the quality. Every single unit is just glorious using the highest possible resolution and textures that this game can muster and generate, which probably isn't how the game works, but it's how my brain uh, quantifies how all this works. Um, and they just look so good. It's such a shame that their campaign is a bit of a doddle, because they you'd just love to fight with these units in a campaign where you're really scrapping. But then with the way that the campaigns do work... Oh, the Marines are coming for us. Charge them down. Um, sometimes the high elves may be harder than other times. Hold on, you're a Regian Smiths. And you're Mithlon Nobles. There's the Noldor veterans. They were going to... They were going to go up and in there just to get to that side, weren't they? Right, hold, let the Smiths do their job. If we continue like this, we will smash the enemy. Up we go, all of you up we go. The other smiths have gone the other way, haven't they? Yes. Oh, hang on. I'm sure we sent more than the smiths the other way. 
Yeah, no, we sent another unit of nobles and they were going to walk through the middle. So these units, in fact, were the ones that were going over there. So we're going to have to loop all the way around that way now. But the smiths have come up against these marines. The fighting begins in the streets. I don't want to run anyone. I know that we're elves, we have high stamina, but high stamina in this game doesn't actually last all that long at all. And uh, it does not take m long until your army is knackered. Now, we will pull the catapults in, though, because if we can use them later on, we damn well will. Elven catapults are, are nothing special, really. They don't have any great thing about them. Right, Mythal Nobles, you go down there. Take that one with you. You and you are going there. And the other way around, though, is a long way round. But we might be able to do it, actually, so... Because I know you probably, ah, we can probably get their attention and then the others can sneak off down that path and under that archway. Pull both of those in. Swords up! Oh, javelins to the face. They shrug them all off, every single one of them. You might as well take all five of these this way then. I don't think those nobles need backup. So the defenders will all keep going. How are we on the other side? You probably should sprint because you are absolutely miles away from the fighting. <laughs> the city is so big. <laughs> They're sending more to stop, to cut off the nobles. But the nobles and the smiths, they are far better than anything the Elder, the um, Abrazanim, ugh, the Ardenaim have here. They don't even have a crossbow unit to try and do some ranged armor-piercing damage. In fact, I don't think they have any armor-piercing units left other than this band of 17 savages. And the savages are so weak in battle anyway that they're only good as an early-tier armor-piercing unit. In the late game, because their own armor is so pathetically average, they just can't really do anything. <laughs> I thought there's a gap. You two run. Go, 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 go. The other ones, run around the edge. There we are. Yep, just sneak around the side. Off we go, off we go. All three of you, perfect. The fighting continues. We've got another smith unit who's going to come down this side. And he's going to bring Elrond and the Dunedain with him. And they're going to fire over the back of the enemy. Oh, Elrond and the Dune are bloody miles away. Get a move on. And then all we've got is Sindar archers. Um, and they're good. they are relatively good in melee, to be honest. But of course, we want to use them as archers. We should have sent the Sindar this way, actually. There is no need, actually, to go all further around, let's be honest. They've left us a huge gap there. We might as well just go in. We don't need to come from that side, too. So the archers... running. The smiths are coming down the line. What are the stats? 26% of the enemy has died and only 1% of us have. Dear oh dear, we are far better than these fools. Here we are. They caught those from our flank to the side. Those smiths are coming down the line. I keep saying coming down the line. That means nothing really. They're coming in. Ah, the nobles are finished. Perfect. In we go. If we can get the smiths, actually, to form a nice, even no matter how thin it is, a nice line like that, then Elrond and his son can come in behind and start peppering the enemy in this place. So you go into defensive, you two go into defensive too, and then we'll send the archers down one by one behind to do exactly the same thing. I'm sure they'll get some shots off. Is that Elrond running in there? Yes! He needs his sprite updated. He's silver and he should be gold. All right, the smiths form up. Look at them forming into lines. Oh, it's glorious. It's absolutely glorious. Mythlon Nobles, you're ready? Charge the household guard. You fellows, can you come into this gap, please? Avoid both fights. I need you to flank. Are the catapults in the city? Yes, they are. As soon as those marines go down, we can pull the catapults into this corner as well and just do some 
horrendous damage. In fact, we could probably pull them in already, actually. Because there's only 13, 12 marines left. So it won't be long until that column is cleared. There we are, they're moving in to try and shut us down because our forces are in position and the arrows are starting to fly. Cinder, you have your task. All of you, stand still, start firing. What are you doing? What are you doing? Just start shooting things, jeez. Alright, you guys, through that gap. You and you. Come into the middle, we'll worry about what we do with you in a second. Did you guys get round before you got attacked? No, you got caught on the edge by the captain. Oh no, the, the Naduzaga. Oh, he's down, don't worry, that's all ended. <laughs> You guys have finished as well, haven't you? I should have built this entire army out of Sindar. I've, I've definitely uh, made this force just way too strong. Well, what's gone down down here? Why have they run away? What? what? <laughs> well, that makes no sense to me, but and you are very small. Right, into the middle. Let's get some flanking going. Plenty of targets, particularly over on this right-hand side. In we go, in we go, in we go, in the back. And Nobles come down to this far corner. Look, it's just wonderful, isn't it? You come to our homeland. You come to our homeland. And then we come to yours. Our catapults are in. Just to really add insult to injury. Our Sindar have free reign, but there's no one to shoot at. Those guys are shooting, obviously, down that line. But that's all they've got. The enemy is now putting up a bit of a fight. Let's make it a little more cinematic, shall we? Oh, look at that solid wall of black and red. He's not even doing anything. What's this? Look, he looks terrified. <laughs> don't make me go forward. I don't want to die. The elves mercilessly cutting a path through the just absolute glob of... <laughs> that is a huge collection of Arden Iron. I'm just, I can't not do it. The temptation. Just give me one killer shot. Our men have slain the enemy general. Without him, his troops Pull out. lose their will to fight. Clear the path. Clear the path. Come on, Trebuchets, come on. Oh, the catapults are Only not... half the enemy force remains. Are you doing it? Are you doing it? Are you doing it? They've stayed with the shooting symbol. Yes. Yes. The enemy general has died. They did have a general, but I don't think he was... A... Oh, my goodness. I don't think he was a family member. <laughs> yes. That is what you want to see. Oh dear. Some elves may die, but there's nothing that your brothers endured at the sacking of Mithlon. Every building in this place will be torn down. Every stone turned to dust. No memory of Umbar will be left on the lips of any living. And we'll start that by crushing their very bones of the weight of our... No! Highly inaccurate. Cease. The fear is set. The damage is done. Let's get Elrond involved. Are those armies coming in to support yet? No, they're still just going to stand down the side. Pull the Sindar around. Get yourselves involved there. Cat spots can even curl around as well, actually, thinking about it. Zadunadine. The Ardenaim hold on, but it'll be for naught. Yes, the northern side of the square has been cleared. Pull yourselves into a line. The last of our enemies stands down there, and they will come back when the square falls. The 
the general obviously is long dead. I know that they are on fire at will, I just don't know why. Then surely they can shoot down there. No, they can't. That's why they're not shooting. <laughs> the enemy will come back. Move those catapults further forward. Although they're in the way of the archers there. Archers pull to the side. Our men are in command of the city! Stand ready. Here they come. If only you could get these to attack ground. Why are you not allowed to attack ground in this game? It's so annoying. Because I could target them right now and the enemy would walk into it. Sindara begun firing. Shoot them, shoot them, shoot them, shoot them, shoot them, shoot them, shoot them. Go on, go on, go on. That's it, that's it. Load. Our men no longer command the city. Oh. Got like three kills, maybe tops. Cease fire. End this. Elrond. The power of the Eldar must flow through this courtyard. The Azra's I here. Uh, stand and fight. But it is folly. The city has fallen. The dead elves of Mithlond have been avenged. Círdan will not be forgotten. It is over. Two Naru and Naru royals fight on. The last footman falls. Elrond himself takes out the royal guard. Well done, Elrond. Getting really stuck in there. That's good to see. The southern side of the courtyard has fallen. Our men have taken control of the city. And the last of the defenders of the empire of the Ardenaim fall. Unprepared for the assault from the elves. And now it is a massacre. The finest warriors on the face of Middle-earth up against just peasants with sword and shield in comparison. If that weren't enough, there's now f two rows of catapults ready. Five Sindar archers with arrows to spare, poised, waiting for any stragglers to try and break free. <clears throat> It's just a vast horde of elven supremacy at the moment, isn't it? The blue capes of Mithlond around the red capes of Imladris. Glorious. Absolutely glorious. It's nice when nations come together to destroy people, isn't it? Amidst the backdrop of massacre, murder and death is, is a story of union and peace and brotherly love. <clears throat> it can't be distinguished. Oh, down they go. What a sorry sight as the last three. Oh, he's really being taken to task. Oh, he's just hacked into the back of the other guy and cut his knee off. You're, you're missing his head. It's up here, Fred. Be awed by the victory. It's we over. have won here today. And there's one. The elves of Mithlond and Imlad just celebrate their victory over the forces of the Arat and I am in the south. Umbar falls. And the elves live on. Urizir fell some time ago, but he was not a family member. He was just a general. And Captain Zainabin, of course, made no impact whatsoever. I'm not sure he, he killed any single soul. He killed one of us. One! Taking the top spot by some margin and showing their incredible skill. The Eregian Smiths with 680 kills alone. That is almost an in one sixth. It is more than a sixth. More than, uh, closing in on almost a third of their army killed by the Eregian Smiths alone. That is outrageous. Second, 408 kills, Eregian Smiths. No surprises there. <clears throat> Excuse my voice, sorry, it's very early in the morning. Noldor Veterans 364 for calling in in third place. Um, this is what happens when elite melee warriors come up against crappy melee nothings. 
ultimate victory. Now, I will just do one um, full world. I think we did that last time, actually, didn't we? Uh, but it's always, it feels fitting to end a campaign on a, on a removed fog of war to see how the rest of the world had done. And if I did do that last time, do forgive me. Uh, it has been two weeks, um, more than two weeks, in fact, since I last recorded High Elves, uh, and I just can't remember. Set up an ambush. Ah! There we are. I wanted to also jump straight into the attack because I noticed they had a full garrison, which made the battle more interesting. Um, if we had sailed down, there's a risk they might have buggered off up here somewhere and done something else. So I thought it would be better to just go in straight away. So there we are. <clears throat> the end of the High Elves campaign. Now, before we do the thing, remember, go, if you haven't voted already in the poll in the description, there's, it'll be Straw Poll, because it's such a useful website, um, and uh, vote on who you want to replace the High Elves with the very latest version 4. Now, the dwarves are not yet ready. Um, at the time of me recording this video and putting the poll up, the dwarven script is not in the game yet. So um, I probably won't bother putting Ered Lewin as an option because why would we play them now when we can when they don't even have the main thing that they're going to have in version four? And also we've been up here an awful lot, so I'm not too bothered about not coming back to Eriador for a turn. <clears throat> I would suggest maybe the dwarves replace Dorwinian when that ends. But anyway, whatever factions are in the list are the factions you can choose from. I haven't even thought of what they're going to be yet, so that's why I'm being um, vague about it. But if we look at the rest of the world, then Harad have done relatively well, and they own most of Harad save Foran Karagmir, or the Haradrim Wastes, which the Ardenaim have taken. The Ardenaim didn't really do too much, actually. They've only pushed up to uh, Baratan and Tolfalas, but you'll note they didn't get Mirlond. Harad did, which is very rare. Dol Amroth are holding them, though, at the Athir Anduin, the crossings of the Anduin, and uh, Gondor pulling their weight as well, because as you will see, Gondor are destroying Mordor quite soundly. Mordor have lost West and East Osgiliath, which they would have held for a time. They've also lost Minas Morgul. Um, you will note as well that somehow they have lost... Oh, no, that's just the Morgul Vale, just juts into the province really bizarrely. They've also taken Gelebrin. They are closing in on Kirith Ungol, and indeed then the Moran and thereafter. So Gondor doing very well indeed, likely because they're not at war with Ened Wyth. And because Isengard has fallen. Although I say they're not. Oh, this is the last time you'll see this setup. Um, they went, they changed back, didn't they? Even the Darwinian one has it. Kingdom of Gondor, enemies, clans of Enderwyth. Oh, they are at war with Enderwyth. Probably because Isengard has now fallen and there's no one left. Oh, Pinterlewin Pin still lives. Well done, sir. Well done indeed. Uh, so Eddard Wyth, if we turn to them, kept alive basically because I destroyed Dunland, which meant Eddard Wyth didn't have to fight Dunland, which meant they went on to survive and then win. Isengard fell also likely because, or helped along because I took out Dunland, which meant Isengard had no support in the north, so Eddard Wyth and Rohan double teamed them and took them down. Rohan, though, doing this well is very unheard of. It's rare. Isengard normally always beat Rohan. Uh, Bree are now at war with Ened Wyth, if memory serves, so they are going to focus more southerly than northerly. Angmar are really, really up against it. They've lost Gobadrine, they haven't got Fueros, the dwarves are really coming in, um, smashing armies left and right here in the region of Rakhang, around Ang Sul. Kandum is but a stone's throw now from the front line, and yet Angmar seem fit to send a full banner army's worth of forces to Kamath Bryn to pick up a random rebel province. They don't even have Morvatar. Kazadum do. Kazadum have got Goblin Town, Morvatarth, Rui, and both Kazadums. This is the best I've ever known Kazadum to do. So, whilst it looks like Angmar might threaten our borders, in truth, Angmar are well and truly defeated already. And they would do well to pull their forces back and just try and defend now. Anything they take will just stretch their army too thin and will speed up their demise. Now, they are definitely going to lose no matter what happens, but they will take longer to die if they pull all their forces back. They might be able to build a sort of Swiss enclave in the north, if you will. Uh, Gundabad utterly annihilated by the combined might, or mostly by the Anduin, uh, but the dwarves, of course, have the key settlements of Berzakul and Mount Gundabad. Danes Hall is the last vestige of Gundabadian freedom, um, holding there as the king to is Gog. That what you want? I like that they have a king. It's just it's nice to have an orc faction that's not the same as everyone else. I I really like the introduction of Gundabad. I think it's, I think it's good. They're more of an AI, uh, more of a human faction though. The AI doesn't really do very well with them. Uh, but the humans do. But this is totally unheard of for the Anduin to do this well. Dol Guldor, you will note, are completely neutered. Dor Norhak and Rohrberg, the only provinces left to them. Absolutely nothing left. I don't know if that's strength from the Anduin, strength from Dale, but they've both played a part. It, it comes from all three, I suppose. 
Uh, Linden also, Linden, sorry, Lorien also have done rather well. They've taken Achnodion and they've taken Tirith Andrin. I say doing well. They've they've taken what you'd expect them to. So they've they've performed, they've performed averagely, I suppose, really. Uh, in the east, Rune are losing. Dale have made it all the way to the forests of Rune. Erebor still in Skarn, as they often are, just hanging around the edge there. Although Talathang still holds with the Lokkarn himself. Margoz! Ah, Margoz is the Lokkarn's son at the start of the campaign. So Rune have only lost one leader in the whole campaign. We're only 98 turns in, though, Jesus. This is the shortest I think I've ever had. Uh, but Dorwinian just totally annihilating them. Evil is well and truly destroyed in this campaign. Mordor do have a few provinces you wouldn't expect, like Dantalad, Dorthalu, and Vilta. But Mordor can't now compete with Gondor. Gondor will take them out. Harad is arguably now the bastion of strength for the evil nations. They are flying the flag of Sauron's dominion. Uh, coupled, I suppose, with the Ardenaean, but with me having now just taken Umbar, and likely if we had fought this campaign on to further, I would have now attacked the Ardenaean because there's no one in the north really left to bother fighting anyway. So we would have gone south. But um, Ruin are just out of it. Darwinian have managed to hold. Darwinian aren't doing especially well. They've just managed to hold. But they have, they have taken Varfest, so that's something for them. Uh, but Ruin and the Burke are still held by Darwinian. Yeah, Ruin are just being beaten into nothing. Submission. So that really is the end. Evil lost altogether long before I even actually had a hand in anything. I mean, I didn't really help with the defeat of Moria. I didn't take any key settlements other than Zag Kala, and then I suppose I kept Moria in check in the early tier days. Stopped there are any army that came near me, I attacked even if it was bound for the north, um, which just pulled God. God Moria's forces were too divided. They had Khazadun, me, and the Anduin, and it was too much for them. Particularly given how I could defeat them with overwhelmingly poor odds in there in my favour and still annihilate them with near zero losses. Um, it meant that Moria would throw less troops at me thinking they'd win and then I would come out of it with all of my forces and they'd suddenly have no army. It, we just, we quite soundly beat Moria. Oh, and I, this is the episode where I would call out the gentleman and I've, I've kept your email for, since this campaign started and now I've totally forgotten your name. Oh, such an anticlimax. That's so disappointing to me. Um, but before we go, there's just time for me to lord it over somebody. Um, and I can't remember your name, but I saved your comment. In the first El High Elven episode, he commented saying, the way you play Galu, this is, you are never going to win this campaign. Let's face it. And I saved that comment because I knew that the High Elves, even if you play as badly as me, are so powerful that you can easily win the campaign. And so I saved that comment to rub it in your face. I even saved the time and date that I posted. That's so petty and childish, isn't it? But um, I didn't save it to rub it in the face. I just um, wanted to get a, a, a cheap victory, I suppose. But I can't remember your name, nor the time or the date. So it matters not anymore, to be honest. But there we are. The High Elf campaign has ended. So do now vote for the faction you would like to replace the High Elves with the very latest version 4 build. And um, there's... Obviously, certain factions have to undergone some changes, the greatest of these being the Ardenaim. But they haven't really undergone any change in the way they play. They just have a new design for many of their units, and a couple of units have been um, altered altogether to a different type. Uh, but otherwise, I don't know. The world's your oyster, really, and who you'd want to play. Ideally, I don't want to play either as Mordor or against Mordor, but I'm, I'm easy, really. I just enjoy playing Dak. I enjoy talking through the changes we're bringing. The modding of Dak is still very much alive. We've got an active and healthy team. And uh, whilst changes do come slowly, and most of us now sort of do bouts of modding at a, at a time, well, I certainly do, and, and, and RK and, and uh, the Elite Dwarf seem to be the same. Hummingbird seems to non-stop, like a trickle of modding all the time. But anyway, I just like bringing the mod to you. Um, once the Dwarves of Eredluin are in and tested, version 4 will likely release. So um, I can't give you any specifics because I just have no idea. But I would hope it will come out um, ideally in the sort of first half of the next of this coming new decade. <laughs> uh, the first this coming new year, rather. Um, but we shall see. I hope to do some of the modding now while I have this week off. But I'm also thoroughly enjoying um, doing absolutely sod all with a week off. It's just so nice. Anyway, do take your vote, and for Warhammer, Réponse de Lyonnais will now just continue, and the Dwarves will sit by the wayside, so I'll create a playlist for Réponse, and the Dwarven episodes will be lost in the mire. Uh, but um, there we are, that's the end. So, 
I do hope you've enjoyed following along this high elf campaign. Apologies that I cheated at the end, but it was that or just play the game off screen for an hour to get to this point. I thought, why bother? You might as well just put the art troops in. It's going to make no difference. I'm not going to record the build-up stage, so it makes no odds. But there we are. Umbar's fallen and High Lord Elrond, Conqueror of Umbar, Sire. now returns the favour on for what the Ardenaim did to Círdan um, about a year or so ago in terms of game time with the capture of Mythond. But with that, we shall conclude. So thank you very much for watching, if indeed you have. I do hope you have enjoyed this campaign as much as I have. I do hope you're enjoying Divide and Conquer and you're looking forward to version 4. Um, but until we speak again, dear friends, Navar Naden Peramad Melonin, and farewell.